This video is sponsored by KH Camera. The start of a new year is a great time to reflect on your previous year, your wins, your losses, and also make changes for the new year ahead. And with that in mind, that is exactly what I did recently as I've purchased a bunch of new gear and I've changed up my wedding photography kit for 2023. The other day, I just got my last piece of gear in the mail and I posted it on Instagram and saw if you all wanted to see what my kit currently is for 2023. I got a resounding yes, so let me share with you what my gear setup is for this year of wedding photography. Starting out with my camera body, which is the X-T5. Now, if you've been keeping up with Fujifilm, they have released a bunch of banger cameras recently with the X-H2S, X-H2, and the X-T5. Their lineup right now is absolutely crazy, and I love everything they're doing. Now, I've been shooting on the X-T3 for the last four years, and it is hands down my camera of choice, which is why when it came to upgrading, going to the X-T5 made more sense for me. Now, obviously the X-H2 and X-H2S has more advantages and is more so their pro camera. The X-T5 really just fits everything I love about Fujifilm and why I switched to them in the first place. And if you would like me to make a video about why I switched to Fujifilm and the things I love, let me know in the comments below. But the X-T5 is absolutely amazing and I've already shot a wedding with it and I loved everything about it. I made a video about that, which I'll link right here up above, but I love the X-T5. It feels exactly like I want it to, like an X-T3. It has the 40 megapixels and you can definitely tell in the photos and it focuses way better than the X-T3 did. While it's not on par with the X-H2S or X-H2, it is still way better than what we've already seen from past Fujifilm cameras. So it is an absolutely amazing camera. To go along with the body, I also bought the metal hand grip. Now, one big gripe that a lot of people have with the X-T5 is the fact that it does not have a battery grip. Now, you don't need it for the batteries at all. The batteries actually last extremely long. I shot a whole wedding and only used three batteries and a camera, and I didn't even burn through the whole third battery. I just had it in there in case. But without the battery grip, holding the camera is a little hard at times, especially if you have like a flash on your camera that's getting a little bit heavy or a larger lens. That's why I ended up getting the metal hand grip because that gave me a little bit extra to hold in my hands and made the camera feel so much more comfortable. While it is a little pricey, I definitely recommend it for anyone. I love it and I have it on both of my X-T5s. Another reason why moving over to the X-T5 made sense for me is that I don't have to change all of my existing gear. Now with the X-H2S and X-H2, I would have had to start buying some CF cards and those things are pretty pricey. While they're really fast, I already have a whole bunch of SD cards and I have some of the fastest SD cards as well. So rather than having to buy new cards, I can use what I already have in the ecosystem that I've been building for the last five years of wedding photography. So again, it all made sense for me, but let me know in the comments if you like the X-T5 or the X-H2 2S series. Moving right along, I upgraded all of my lenses from my previous lenses. Now, if you've seen any of my old videos, you know that I absolutely love the F2 versions of all of Fujifilm's lenses. That's the 23F2, 35F2, that line, the really small ones, they're so good, they're so light, they're just amazing lenses. However, for wedding photography, after a while, you do start to wish that you had more light coming in, so I did make those changes. To start out with my widest lens, I just got in the mail the 16 f1.4. Now, I actually don't have a lot of experience with this lens. I've rented it once, but the one time I used it and the one shot I got out of it made me really be like, you know what? I love this lens. It is super sharp. It lets in a lot of light. And I've previously been shooting with the 16 f2.8. And while I love the 2.8 because of its size, Every time I get to reception time, which is where I mainly use it, I'm always like, ah, dang, it's a 2.8. And I definitely feel it compared to all my 1.2 and 1.4 lenses. So I went to the 16 1.2 mainly to let in more light since I'm mainly shooting 16 millimeters at the reception. Again, once the dance floor opens up, I'm on the dance floor with all the guests with my widest lens and a flash getting great shots of the dance floor. And the 16 2.8 just left me with not enough light. So I wanna be able to lower my ISO some and get in more light, which is why I moved over to the 16 f 1.4. For probably my most main use lens, that's gonna be the 23 f 1.4. Now this is the new one and ugh, it is so good, it is so sharp and it focuses so fast. All of these newer lenses that Fujifilm is putting out are just like, 
hands down, some of the best work they have ever done. And I'm really happy to have this new kit now on the X-T5 and that 40 megapixels. Now again, the 23 f1.4 is the lens I'm gonna be using most of the time. Generally during a wedding day, a 35 millimeter focal length is what I'm always on. It has enough space to show me what's happening and give context to my photos, but it's also not too close. Especially when people are getting ready, you're gonna need that bit of wideness, but not too close. It just, just, it's a great focal length. For anyone who's looking to get prime lenses, I highly recommend getting a 23 because hands down, you're gonna use it for everything and it looks great in most all contexts. Next up is my mid-range lens, which is the 33 f1.4. This lens is probably my favorite. It is super sharp and I have a hard time not using it all the time. If you've seen any of my full wedding days, which I'll link right up above, you know that I'm generally shooting with two cameras. And the way that I set it up is that my right side camera is my wide lens camera, and my left side camera is my close lens camera. This way I don't have to change my lens every five seconds, and I have certain setups for certain parts of the day. So for instance, when the wedding day starts, I'm using on my 23 and 33 because I'm gonna be in a hotel room or a smaller room where people are getting ready, it makes no sense to use something like a 56 or a 90 because that's gonna be way too tight. 23 and 33 is a great focal length. 23 is gonna be all my wider shots for context and the 33 is gonna be all my close-up detail shots, which I absolutely love to do. I think the getting ready portion of a wedding day is probably my favorite. And the 33 just really gets into those details and just gives me that background separation I want. And again, it is so, so sharp. And then my longest lens is the new 56 F 1.2. Now, I know I used to swear by the 50 F 1, which I do still like that one a little bit better. However, the weight and size of the 56 just really hits the spot for me. Also with all the lenses that I've just listed, I have an extremely light kit. Like it's just the lightest, smallest kit and the X-T5s don't even have battery grips. So I'm just like small and mobile, I absolutely love it. But the 56 is great. It focuses fast enough. I still need to put it against the 50. I don't know which one focuses faster. It's hard to tell. It also lets in a lot of light and I love the reach and also how close you can get to things now that it can focus so much more close. Generally, I'm using this lens for any speeches, any close-ups during the ceremony. All the time I'm using the 56 when things are slowed down and I wanna get those nice portraits of people. Now, if you're looking to upgrade your kit for 2023, one of the best ways you can do that is with this video sponsor, KEH Camera. KH Camera is hands down one of the best ways to upgrade your kit and not have to spend too much money. With premium grade used gear, you can upgrade your kit with new to you gear at a fair price. And the reason I say premium grade used gear is because everything I've purchased from KH comes in looking basically new. They put so much care and love into all the gear that comes into them that pretty much this is probably the best way to buy gear, which is why I highly recommend it if you're looking to upgrade some of your gear pieces. Also, if you're looking to get rid of some of your gear, KEH Camera is a great way to do that without working with an odd third party where you're not sure if your gear is even gonna get to the client who purchased it. Honestly, I hate having to do that myself. I'd rather not deal with selling it and just give it to someone who's gonna handle it well and also pay me quickly. You can do this by hopping on a call with one of their specialists. They'll take a look at your gear, give you an offer and you ship it to them. It is an extremely easy process. And again, with film photography coming back as hard as it is, KH camera is gonna be the way to do it. Honestly, I've been looking at and trying not to, <laughs> but I'm probably gonna buy a medium format camera sometime soon because I really, really want a film medium format camera. They also have a 180 day warranty on their used gear and a 21 day return period. So really you cannot go wrong with KEH camera. Make sure to check out the links in the description below for 5% towards purchasing or 5% towards selling any of your gear to KEH camera. Make sure to upgrade your gear the right way this year and not spend all of your money so that your business can run extremely well and smooth. So we've talked about my camera body and the lenses that I'm using for weddings, but let's talk about some of the accessories. Now, generally the biggest accessory you're gonna be using as a wedding photographer are gonna be your flashes. I'm still gonna be sticking with the V862 from Godox. 
I absolutely love this flash and I've been using it for the last four years, so I'm extremely used to it. One big thing you have to remember to do in your business is not just upgrade your gear because there's something else new. So I know a lot of people have been asking me about the V863, but I haven't had a chance to even use it yet. And again, I wanna keep the bottom line of my business extremely low. I don't need to be upgrading my gear every single year. The flashes work and they're great. If you're not familiar with the flash, they basically can talk to all other Godox flashes, which is really awesome. That's why I have four of them so that I can do off-camera flash setups and just on-camera flash setups whenever I want to. They come with a lithium ion battery as well, so the recycle times are really fast. And honestly, these batteries can hold a charge long enough for me to do two full weddings. And at this point, since they're not the newest one, they're probably cheap. I don't even know how much they cost, but I love this flash. I'll be using it until they basically die. Also for additional lighting, I'm using the Loom Cube Panel Go. Now, generally I'm using this for sparkler exits, which you can see in this video up above, but I also use it whenever there's a low light situation and I'm doing portraits. It's great to have like an assistant or a second photographer hold the flash up and I can use a more natural light approach to taking my portraits rather than flash. You can actually see that in some of these photos here. I was just using the Loom Cube and available light, even though it was basically nighttime. I prefer this rather than having you use a flash all the time. So generally, you're always gonna see me with a Loom Cube Ami. They're so versatile and they work extremely well. And especially, again, if you don't wanna have to fiddle around with your flash all the time, they're great for certain situations. However, don't use them for the whole reception. They're really not good for like every type of photo, but sparkler exits, and portraits at night, they can handle fairly well. And then last but not least is my camera straps and my camera bags. Y'all have seen these for years in all my full wedding day videos, and I've been using them for years, and I don't think I will ever change. But the Hold Fast Gear Moneymaker, which is my double strap, always goes with me on every single wedding. Now with the Hold Fast Gear Moneymaker, the biggest thing for me is versatility and style. I cannot tell you how many weddings I go to and people are like, oh snap, look at the photographer. And someone's always, oh, I love your straps and I got matching shoes. I'd be looking fly, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but it's just such sturdy gear as well. Like even my first moneymaker from when I started photography still works well. And you can tell that it has some wear on it, but like it's leather, like premium, well-made leather. This thing ain't gonna break on you at all. It allows me to hold two cameras while also looking good. Like, sorry for all, no offense to anybody who's using like the spider straps and stuff, but it just, it doesn't look cool. You know what I'm saying? Like, I wanna be at my weddings looking good. So if you're not familiar with the Moneymaker, definitely check them out in the description below. And I hope to make a video on it this year. I just realized that I've been on YouTube now for like three years and I haven't made a single video about the Moneymaker, which makes no sense because I'm wearing it all the time. So again, hit the like if you wanna see a video on the Moneymaker and I'll try and get that out this year. I also have a couple of Hold Fast Gear bags. The one that you mainly see me using on a wedding day is the Sightseer. That one sits right on my back and I can grab all of my things from in that bag. What's really cool is I'm not one of those photographers who brings like a huge bag with them and like leaves it somewhere random and hopes people don't steal my stuff. Pretty much everything I need is on me at all times. I have a pouch, on my money maker that has one of my lenses and then I have the bag on my back that also has another one of my lenses and two of my flashes. Also there's extra batteries and my loom cubes in that bag as well. So I'm literally walking around with everything I need on me at all times. Now, Holdfast doesn't make the sights here anymore, but I would love to maybe partner with them and make like a John Branch version. And if you would love to see that, please let Holdfast know to let them know that it's a viable idea. Also, I use the Romographer bag whenever I travel. Now, one thing that's really funny for some reason is I can't book weddings in my own state. I usually only do like one or two a year. I'm generally booking everywhere else in the US except for like down the road for myself. <laughs> but because of that, I travel very often. And when I do, I use the Romographer as my bag of choice. Not only does this bag look great and can turn into a weekend bag very quickly, but it's easy to carry around and holds all the gear that I need. Generally, when I'm flying, I keep this bag with me. It goes through check-in and everything just fine. And I have all my stuff with me at all times. And I'm able to fit two cameras, four lenses, two flashes, extra batteries, chargers, all that stuff right in this bag. So I've always been a huge fan of using it. And that's mainly what I'm gonna be working with for 2023. 
I do have other cameras and gear as well, like the X-H2S, which I'm recording on now, but that's mainly my YouTube camera video side of things, which we're just talking about photo and weddings. And speaking of photos and weddings, make sure not to miss my full wedding day videos, which I just released one where I'm shooting with the GFX 100S. You can check those out here and also my courses in the link below. Thanks for hanging out and I hope you all have an amazing 2023.